Today is part three of my makeup collection. So I'm gonna go over powder, face powders, bronzers, and highlighters. I'm gonna just set them all out and we'll get to talking about them. I keep a pretty curated collection on powders. I wouldn't say that mine is too big. It's definitely not very small, but I don't like a lot of powders. I have pretty dry skin, so I try and stay away from anything that's too heavy. I will take out the stuff that I dislike the most first, and then I'll go over some of my favorite stuff. So um, this RCMA, I tried it because Allie Glines was trying it. She said that she really liked it. I have seen other YouTube content creators say that they really like this. Um, this is the original no color powder from RCMA. I don't care for it that much because it's a little too heavy for me. And then the Laura Mercier, this is just their original translucent setting powder. Um, again, I kind of find it too heavy for me. I find it too heavy for me in the center of my face. If I powder the outsides of my face, it's okay. So I keep it for that reason. RCMA is pretty similar, like if I do my forehead, like if I'm just setting like a liquid product, um, I'll use this. But it just kind of sits there. It's, it's a lot of product and I don't use it very much. So unless you have oily skin, I wouldn't recommend this for someone with dry skin. The ones that I would recommend for someone with dry skin for the loose powders are the Maybelline Fit Me. I find that it's super finely milled. I don't know what shade this is in. This is in Fairlight. Um, so I find this is super finely milled and it's very nice. It's not too... Uh, powdery or cakey on me and then also for Maybelline this is their lasting fix this is the banana translucent setting powder I also don't think this is too heavy I don't know if a lot of people like banana powders but I do I like using it for all over my face and then also um, the beauty bakery better not bitter um, what they call flower what is this is this in the shade of something oat translucent um, I love this stuff. I love it so much I have a backup, which is ridiculous because who needs a backup? But I think this is literally the cutest thing ever. I don't use powders enough to warrant having a backup, but I liked it so much I kept it. I didn't want to, I don't know, I just didn't want to run out of this, I guess. I, I really do like this. Um, so those are of some of my favorite loose powders. Now my, my favorite um, pressed powders are and this one's even panned, the Charlotte Tilbury um, Pressed Powder. Airbrush Flawless Finish, this is in the shade One Fair Light. I love that, super finely milled. The Dior um, Backstage uh, Powder No Powder. I, pan I haven't panned this, but I've it's definitely hard panned, but I love this. Um, this is actually has a tint to it, so I do like it. Um, to kind of set all over my face because it's not translucent. It kind of uh, adds a little bit of extra coverage. And then I've grown to really love this. This is the one size turn up the base versatile foundation powder in the shared fair 3N. Love this, love this. I think he did a really good job on this. I've grown to really like that. So those are my favorite um, pressed powders. I have had others in my collection before and have decluttered them because I don't really like them as much. So I have curated my pressed powder collection down to, well, I have four, but the, those are my top three, the ones that I really like. The fourth is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Ethereal Light. I like this. It's I don't like it as much as those ones, so obviously I will grab for those first before I grab for this one, but I do like it. And then finally, on the loose powders, I do like all of these powders, but they're not of my favorite. So the first that I'm going to go over is the Becca. This is the Under Eye Brightening Setting Powder. I kept this one. I probably got this at TJ Maxx, um, but I kept this one because it was under eye specifically. I do like it for that because it is pretty white and it does brighten my under eyes, but additionally, um, it's very finely milled. So sometimes when I'm having dry under eyes or I'm using maybe a more full coverage, heavier concealer, I'll grab for this to set under the eyes. And then this one is another one I got at TJ Maxx, which is almost gone. This is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. 
I have used this quite a bit. It's one of those that feels cooling when you put it on. And I have like a tiny bit left and I will continue to use this, but I do like it. I have the Hourglass, um, this is the Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This uh, I do like. I find it's heavier than like some of my other ones that I've been over that are my favorites. So I will use this once just a mini. I just recently got this. This is the Say um, Air Set Radiant Loose Setting Powder in Translucent. I like this. I find this is heavier than all of the other powders that I have. So um, I don't use it as often, but I don't dislike it. I do like it. Then the Huda Beauty, and I just got a mini in this. This is her Baby Bake Loose Bake and Setting Powder in Pound Cake. Um, I just got a mini. I wish I hadn't because I really don't like this poof at the end of it. I have a hard time like getting the product out. Where do I dump it? Because this sits all the way in the bottom. Like if you just turn it over, it doesn't like deposit a whole lot onto the thing. And I find like I have a hard time kind of like getting it off. It just looks funny. It's a little more work than I like. Now it's even getting dirty. So I wish I got the bigger one. And I think maybe that would have helped like get some of the product out a little bit easier. Um, but I like this. I actually don't think this is too heavy. And then finally, the Fenty Beauty. This is the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Setting Powder in the shade Butter. I like this. I actually think this feels pretty cooling. It feels a lot like the, the Becca Hydra Mist. It is heavier and it is perfumed. Unlike, I mean, the, the Huda Beauty is perfumed, but this more so than really any other powder. So I, I don't always grab for this and it's such a huge container. I think it would take me years and years to get through all of this, but I don't think this is overly heavy. So I do, I do like this. It took me a while with this one to like it. I had an on again, off again relationship with it, but I like it. And I think I've heard a lot of people really like this. So I have grown to really like it. Um, I would say it's kind of unique. It, it definitely has a, a unique cooling texture. And the final one that I have, I just purchased is the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. This is in the shade Fair 150C. So I got this as more of a setting powder as opposed to a powder foundation. I do like powder foundations sometimes, but mostly I will just use a light hand and use them as setting powders. Um, I, I think this is okay. This one's still in my vanity. I haven't fully tested it out, but it's not too heavy. I do like it so far. Okay, so that's it for the powders. Let's move on to bronzers. Here are the powder bronzers, and I have another set that I'm going to go over, which is the liquid bronzer. So I'm going to take these all out, set them up. I'll probably have to break it up into two screens because not everything will fit. So let's go through them. This is the first set of bronzers. I just have one more small group that wouldn't fit in the frame. So I'm gonna pull out the ones in this group that are really my favorite. So this is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer, and I think this one is in the shade Sunrise. So I love this bronzer because it is just a really good tone for me, not too um, warm toned, and I like a luminous bronzer. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I like a luminous bronzer. I think this is a really good formula. I like the way this looks on me. This one is a fun one. And then I really like the Milani. This is the Silky Matte Bronzer in the shade Sunlight. I like this, again, this is not warm toned at all. I like the matte finish. There's a time and a place for Luminous and then there's a time and a place for, um, for a matte bronzer. So very different shades as you can see. So depending upon kind of the blush that I'm wearing, I'll change it up, but I like this one. And then the third favorite from this group is the Becca. This is the Sunlit Bronzer in Bali Sands. I picked this up from Ulta before they left Ulta, but before last September. Um, this one I really like, not too warm toned on me. Very nice formula, super soft, nice and finely milled. I don't know, you probably can't get your hands on this anymore, but you could maybe on like Poshmark or Macari or something like that. And then my fourth, Favorite from this collection, as far as favorites go, is the Balm, um, Balm Desert Bronzer. This is supposed to be a bronzer in a blush. It just does a really good tone to it. Um, 
it doesn't pull too warm on me and it's just a shade that I really like. I wouldn't say this is luminous, it's more matte, but it is a good shade for my skin tone. So those are some of my favorites from this one. I do like everything else. Uh, I wouldn't say I dislike anything else. However, the Gucci one, I like the formula, I like the finish, but I got a shade, it was just too dark for me. I ended up getting this in medium, zero two. So it's, it's the second shade from the lightest. When I was looking at the pictures online, the lightest looked too light, and I was definitely wrong. I should have gotten the lightest. It's just too dark a shade for me. See, Ooh. it's very pigmented. It is a very nice finish. So I would say that I would love to get my hands on this in the lighter shade. I just don't know if I'd go back and spend the money because this is very pricey. It does have a scent to it, which doesn't bother me, but it may bother some people. Next, the Sicily Bronzer. This is the Fido Touche Sun Go Bronzing Gel Powder. So this is a baked formula. I would say that it is nice. It is very, very pricey. This is, I think, like $103 or something like that. It's shimmery. Um, I wouldn't say that it's glittery, but it does have a lot of shimmers in it. Uh, I almost sometimes feel that this is too dark, but because it's that baked gelée formula, if you take a, a brush and you go pretty lightly in it, you can pick up just a little bit to, to make it work. I wanted to try something from Sicily. I would definitely say it's not worth the price point. I'm glad that I have this in my collection, but I wouldn't buy this particular product again if I ran out. So next, this is one that I really don't care for. Even though I think Milani does a tremendous job with their face powders, this is the Glow Baked Bronzer in the shade 04. I'm not sure what that is, but it's it's like almost an orange blush and it has like highlighty shimmers in it. I know it's supposed to be luminous, but I find that it's absolutely too luminous. It's almost like a highlighter. So I don't care for it for that reason. See how glowy it is? It's just very, very glowy. Um, so I really like their matte formula. I just didn't care for this finish. Here is a Buxom bronzer. I picked this up probably at TJ Maxx. This is the Staycation Vibe Primer Infused Bronzer in Rooftop Tan. The reason that I picked this up is because I was hoping it was a similar formula like the Primer Infused Blushes. I just don't know. It's not anything special really at all. It's, you know, it's nice. It's a little orange. Maybe this is a little too dark of a color for me. I don't know. It just wasn't, it wasn't anything that wowed me. Um, Makeup by Mario. I picked this up. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector. I picked this up with his cream bronzer. This is in the shade Light. This is weird to me. This is too orange. I don't know. I didn't watch the tutorial on what this was meant to do. This is a nice shade and I'm not sure. So, I mean, I kind of swirl them all together and they give it like skin-like finish that turns out to be a good bronzer, but I would almost say that he was going for highlight, um, like luminous bronzer and maybe a, a contour, but they're too small to get, you know, any particular brush in it and I wouldn't work that hard to try and pick up one individual product so I just kind of swirl them around so for that reason I don't find that it's anything very unique I prefer the other cream bronzer more than I prefer this product though they launched at the same time another one that I don't really care for is the LYS no limits matte bronzer in the shade motivate which is their lightest shade uh the reason that i didn't care for this is because i had a really hard time blending it out it just wound up patchy on me i don't know why i think it's a very soft formula but i don't know why it came out so patchy and maybe it was the brush that i was using i was using the lys bronzer brush and so i just felt like why am i working this hard and i kept trying at it kept trying and it kept still coming out patchy so maybe I'll give it another shot maybe with a very fluffy brush and we'll see how that comes out but it it wasn't my favorite but if it doesn't give you any trouble upon application then I would say it's a good bronzer for the formula and finish here is one that I picked up at Ulta like the 21 days of beauty this is the cover fx um this is like one of the only cover fx things that I have this is a monochromatic uh, bronzer duo, duo a matte and shimmer finish and this is in sun kiss bronze I, I feel like this is a little bit too dark for me but I do like the finish and I, I will wear these together if I want more of a luminous bronzer but it's not anything um, you know it doesn't stand out above some of the other ones 
it's not bad. It's just not my favorite. All right, one that I do actually really like is the Believe Beauty. This is the Sunstruck Marbleized Bronzer in Sunkissed Honey. It looks pretty dark in the pan, but it actually comes off really nice. It's a dollar, I think. I got it at the Dollar General. Um, it has a really nice finish. It is kind of luminous. So I really do like this bronzer for a dollar. You really can't beat it. I just can't believe they can make products that perform this well that are very blendable, luminous, you know, all the things that you maybe look for in a bronzer, and it's a buck. Here is one I think I also got at the 21 Days of Beauty sale at Ulta. This is the Nabla Skin Bronzing Sunkissed Effect Bronzing Powder. Well, wow, that's a lot. In the shade Ambra. I think this is a baked formula. It looks very dark in the pan, but it isn't, so it is a nice one. And then I got this mini probably on a birthday kit from Sephora. This is the NARS bronzer in Laguna. The Laguna shade is too dark for me. I know this is their most popular shade. And I know that their cream bronzers they came out with, they came out with Laguna 0102. So they actually lightened the Laguna line or the shade for that particular cream bronzer. Whereas this one, I actually find too dark for me. Um, so I keep it. If I use a light hand, it's okay. It is like luminous. You have kind of like those micro glitters in there. So it has a pretty finish. It's just a little dark. One I really do like is the Marc Jacobs. Um, this is just, I think their Tantastic Omega Bronzer. Coconut Perfect Tan. Okay, so it's, I don't know if that's in the shade Tantric or what. But I like this because it's not too, I like the shade on me. I really do. The finish is, is very matte but the shade itself is light enough that it works really well for my skin tone. So um, I just got the mini, I got it from TJ Maxx. I'm sure you can probably find this still somewhere. It's just a, a really good shade, I think, for light skin tone, so I like this. And I take this a lot on travel because it's just one of those uncomplicated, you know, small, portable, and it, the shade is nice. Next is the Glowish. This is the Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder in Zero One Light. This is marbleized. I do like the finish. I don't think that it pulls orange on me at all. If you can kind of see on my finger, it's very um, like, you know, brown and tan as opposed to like a, a warm undertone. I do like this. It isn't my favorite, but it is a pretty good bronzer. I think this is the last one in this set. This is the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer. I originally, I think I thought this was going to be too dark, but it is a good color. It still smells like, like hot chocolate. It smells delicious. I like this one. I think it's super soft. Oh, it's so soft. You could almost like, it almost feels like you could dip your finger into it and make it indent. It's so soft. I really like this one. It used to be one of my absolute favorites until I found some of the other ones that are more luminous that I, I tend to gravitate more towards, but I think this is fantastic. This is the last of the powder bronzers. So this one is Jacqueline Cosmetics, I don't know, Bronze and Blushing Duo in Lilac Love and Top Tan. I keep this in my bronzer drawer, but my blushes and bronzers stay together, so it doesn't really matter. This uh, is a good shade for me, but I don't gravitate towards this kind of really pinky blush. Because she had them in duos, you know, you kind of had to pick the bronzer that maybe worked best for you and the blush that kind of went with it. I took my chances. It's not my absolute favorite. It, it sits in here. The packaging is super bulky. Um, I don't love it. I don't gravitate towards it. I really don't. I don't necessarily love duos or face palettes, but I wanted to give this formula a try. I would say the formula is very nice. Next is Jouer. Uh, this I don't love. Let me read this so you can't see the reflection. Light to medium bronze duo in sunlight and suntan. So the reason that I don't care for this that much, this is the sunlight shade and it is too light on me. It almost doesn't show up at all, which is strange because you'd think I'm pretty fair skinned. Almost anything would show up, but it doesn't. This is the darker shade and it pulls very orange. It does not seem that it would pull orange in the pan, but it extremely orange on my face. So I don't love it. I think the blushes were very popular from Jouer. The reason that I haven't decluttered this is because I think I want to love it. I, I think I do, but I just don't love the color. 
if I go pretty heavy on the sunlight shade, it does work for me. But if you have to work extra for a product, usually it's not the one that you gravitate towards. The one that I absolutely love that is my favorite from this group is the True Match Lumi Bronze. I believe this is in the shade 01 Light. So the reason that I love this, this is soft and silky and fantastic and it's luminous and you can see it in the pan. It's just so nice a finish, so nice a color. The luminosity is light. They milled this so finely. It's fantastic. I highly recommend this. This is a really good one and my favorite from this group. Okay, I have two physician's formulas. This was in a launch that they did recently and they had four different maybe shades or um, four different packaging components. And I bought like the PR package where it came in like a little house and two of them were way too dark for me. So I gave them to my sister, but the ones that I held on to were the sprinkles. And this is a good shade for me. This is just an overspray. So the sprinkles immediately came off. And this one is fairly orange. This one is in sugar. Um, it is fairly like orange, but when I mix this with it, I sometimes will skip bronzing and just use this kind of as a bronzer slash, slash blush, and it is nice. Um, but it is very orange, as you can see. It's just kind of a really orangey tone. But it's that, you know, famous physician's formula, very soft, very creamy formula. Finally from this group is the Iconic London. This is the Ultimate Bronzing Powder. The reason that I don't really love this is because it's in the shade medium. I got this in a boxy charm, so you know, of course, the shades are often not right for you. I kept this because it is the only iconic London product that I have in my entire collection. Um, and I, I like the finish of it. If I do a light hand, then it generally works, but medium, again, it's just too dark for my skin tone. Okay, that is it for the powder bronzers. Let's move into cream. <laughs> Here are all my cream bronzers. I actually don't have that many, but I like them all. So I will go over this one first. This is the NARS, this is the new one. So this is the bronzing cream in Laguna 01. And I like the fact that they made 01 and 02 because their regular Laguna color, as I was saying before, was just too dark for me. I like this, it does pull a little bit orange, but the consistency is really nice. Next is the Soul Body. This is the Face and Body Bronzing Balm in the shade Fair. This smells delicious. The consistency is fantastic. I love that they have this little thing here to keep it fresh longer. The problem is it is pretty orange. It does pull pretty orange on me. So, I mean, I like it. I would not use this anywhere other than um, my face. And because it is a little orange, I won't gravitate towards this usually outside of the summertime. The Makeup by Mario, this is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. So, and this is in the shade light. I never watched the tutorial on, you know, how he used this particular product, but it is a cream. It is a cream bronzer for me. It is a good shade. It is pretty light, so it, it does give that really kind of like makeup, no makeup look. So I like this one for that reason. A lot of the other bronzers sometimes will be pretty dark, and um, this one pulls pretty cool toned on my skin, and it is a, a pretty nice finish. This is the Tarte uh, Sea Breeze Cream Bronzer in Seychelles. I think this is from their like Sea Breezy collection or something like that. It's nice, I actually do like it. I don't have many Tarte products. I've never tried um, a bronzer from Tarte before. I think this is a good finish. It is a little orange again for me, but it is a very nice formula. This is the Jacqueline Cosmetics. This is the cream bronzer in Sandy. It pulls a little orange for me, um, but other than that, I like the finish of it. So it is a nice product. This is the Huda Beauty Tantor Contour and Bronzing Cream in the shade Fair. I really like this. This is such a good color. It doesn't come 
out too orange and I think the reason is because it's made to be a contour and a bronzer in one um, hence the name of the actual product but it's so creamy and blendable more so than some of the other ones and it does have a really nice uh, undertone so I like that one this is the Charlotte Tilbury this is the beautiful skin sun-kissed glow bronzer well look at this this sticker um, this one is in the shade fair I think as well yeah uh, it is nice this is a really unique formula I definitely think that's what she was going for it has that kind of like luxurious over-the-top packaging that she likes it just is very unique um, I think it's a good shade on me one I dislike quite a bit is the tower 28 this is the Bronzino in West Coast. The reason that I don't like this is because I feel like it's way too luminous. It just sparkles. Like I don't, I like luminosity. I just think it sparkles and I don't think it dries down and I think it wears off very quickly. I think this has been very popular. So maybe this is an unpopular opinion that I really dislike this one, but I really dislike it. And also the packaging, this almost never stays closed. There are times where I'm like clicking, 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 upsy, and then it won't stay shut. So I don't like this at all. I would never get this again and I wouldn't recommend it. This is the M Cosmetics um, So Soft Bronzing Stick in the shade Summer. I really like M Cosmetics products. I think that this is very creamy. I like the tone. I highly recommend this from M, M Cosmetics. Next, Rare Beauty. This is her bronzer stick in the shade Power Boost. I love the consistency of this. I think it is fantastic. It is soft, it is blendable, it is creamy, it has good lasting power. I actually find that this shade is a little bit too orange for me, but aside from that, everything else about this I love. Next is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand in the shade Fair to Medium. Uh, love this. It's more of a contour than a bronzer because it has an, it does have a cool undertone and not a warm one, but I use it as a bronzer and I do like this. Finally is the Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in the shade Light. I like it. I think it's creamy. I think it's blendable. It is slightly orange on me, but other than that, it is very nice. In terms of which ones I like the best would probably be number one, the Rare Beauty. Number two would be M Cosmetics. And then as far as my sticks go, even though this is nice, Makeup by Mario ranks third. Okay, that is it for the cream bronzer section. We will move on to powder highlighters. Here are all the powder bronzers. I'm gonna do the same thing and move them aside and set them all out and then we'll go through them. what fits in frame now so out of this particular collection I would say that some of my favorites I'll grab them first so this Revlon skin lights this is prismatic highlighter in the shade 201 daybreak glimmer I love this I don't know if this is baked but it definitely looks like a baked formula it's just such a pretty finish it is like that gold look at that I mean so much comes off I mean if it, in terms of like drugstore highlighters this is fantastic if you like this um, kind of blinding highlighter. So this is a really good one. One of my other favorites from this one is the Pat McGrath. This is the Sublime Skin Highlighting Trio. I don't know if these had shades once upon a time. Maybe they did. Um, but I really like this. It looks like a baked formula. I'm not sure if it is, but honestly and surprisingly, my favorite shade is this one. So even though it looks very golden, if I go light, it is so nice over like an orangey luminous blush it's very pretty i don't care for this one that much because of that shift that it has this one has more of a golden shift and this one almost has like a, a pinky blue shift um, but my favorite one in this this set is this one even though it's probably not meant for my skin type tone i still really like this my third favorite from this collection is the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in Flexitarian. I think this one is super popular for good reason. It's that putty formula. Look at it. Oh, jeez. I think this is all of like $8. It just has such a good base to it. It is very nice. It is, you know, the Super Shock formula. It's just beautiful. I love it. 
The rest of these are okay, but they are not my favorites. So let's go through them. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the putty highlighter in Glazed Out. I really think that she was trying to kind of dupe um, the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek, and I actually think she did a really good job. I do really like this. This texture is cooling. It's very nice. It's easy to apply. This was of the first launch, maybe last summer. This was not a recent purchase from the ones that she recently um, released and I, I think maybe she expanded this shade range but it is a very nice highlighter I don't think to gravitate towards it over the color pops super shock cheek next is one a mini one from Jouer this is their powder highlighter in rose gold I really like this I liked this for travel because I like this rose gold with like that gold shift this is a very nice highlighter in terms of things that I like from Jouer I think so far, since this is the only other like powder product that I've tried from them, that I really do like this highlighter. I just didn't care for the tone of the bronzer. This is a really nice one. Okay, I have another one from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the mini highlighter in Iced. I like this one. And I got the mini uh, because I don't think that I had tried any of her powder products before I purchased this. Not a blush, not a nothing else. And I, I thought she did a good job with this. The packaging is pretty bulky though. But other than that, it is a nice um, highlighter. It's not as standout-ish as some of the other ones. Next, I have ColourPop's Super Shock Cheek. This is in Lunch Money. I was This was the first one that I was trying because I don't think I had tried a Super Shock formula outside of the eyeshadows for cheek products before and I got Lunch Money. And I liked it, and then someone else I saw on YouTube had said Flexitarian was the really popular, really awesome shade, so I got that one. And so now this one is just cast aside, because it's not as nice as Flexitarian, but it's good, it's just different. It's not as, it doesn't pop quite as much as Flexitarian does. Next is the Anastasia, um, what is this, this is the highlighter in Iced Out. And I think a lot of people, this came out two years ago, and I think a lot of people were trying to see if it um, was like uh, Omrezy, and they didn't like it as much because it has that like gold shift to it, but I actually like a gold shift. There are often times where I'm wearing, like that, look at that, and it's very similar to the Pat McGrath, that, um, that bronzy tone that I showed you, where it has that kind of orange, goldish, yellowy shift. So for that reason, I really like this one. I really do. I don't find um, the shift terrible at all. It's my favorite thing about this product. Next, a, a highlighting palette from Ace Beauté. This is the Glow Highlighter Palette. I got this in a boxy charm. I really like this. Um, I don't know if I have anything else from Ace Beauté. I don't think I have any other eyeshadow palettes, any other product from them, but I really liked this this palette. I think every shade except this one in this entire palette actually works for my skin tone and I think the formula is really nice. Next I have the um, Space Age highlighter from Kaleidos in, this is the Star Surfer one. Um, I had a couple others and I decluttered them because there are they are very shifty, they are very glittery, I don't care for super glittery highlighters. I would rather it be more creamy and that it melts into my skin as opposed to this where I find it very powdery, has a lot of kick up to it, and I don't care for, I guess, a pink shift. I would rather have like a pink base with a different shift. So I kept this one because it's the least shifty, the least powdery um, from this in their line. And I don't know if they've reformulated or not. Well, that's a terrible swatch. I don't know if they've reformulated or not, but I think they had updated packaging. Um, this is absolutely not my favorite. Their eyeshadows knock it out of the park. I mean, their blushes, fantastic, great. This, I didn't care for that much. Next, I have a Bare Minerals. This is not necessarily a highlighter. This is the Invisible Light Translucent Powder in the shade Glow. It is a highlighter, though. Um, even though it's translucent, it has, like, almost micro glitters in it. So I use this for a highlighter on very light days because it has such a natural finish that it's perfect for like a non-offensive glowy cheekbone. 
So for that reason, I like it. It's just not what it was intended to do. Next, I have Becca's Champagne Pop. Um, just a mini that I'm pretty sure I got at TJ Maxx. Obviously, you can still get this from um, Smashbox. So the Champagne Pop shade you can't go wrong with. Then I have another one in Champagne Pop in different packaging. Not sure why I kept two. Probably because at the time, I thought they were going to go... Um, completely out of business and we weren't going to be able to get our hands on champagne pop so I kept both of them because there were minis um, so I'll keep them for that reason. Next I have the Maybelline Master Chrome Highlighter. This is in the shade Molten Peach. I actually use this as a highlighter slash blush topper. The packaging, terrible. One out of ten. I broke it. I think I've had a different one in this same line and it also broke. It's very flimsy. Um, but it is it's super nice it has a great finish but I don't like it just as a highlighter because it's a little bit too dark for me I like it as a like a blush topper I like a lot of Maybelline products so it is nice next I have a wet n wild this is the mega glow highlighter in blossom glow it's super pretty I think it's like a whole two dollars it's very nice very pearl it's really pretty product I hate the packaging but it is very nice Next, I have the Revolution Pro. This is the Luster Highlighter in the shade White Rose. I think this is so cute. 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 And it's very, very, very shiny. Very icy. It is pretty powdery formula. It, it kicks back quite a bit, but it's such a nice highlighter. And it's, it's suitable for my skin tone. I really like this. I don't love a lot of things for Makeup Revolution, but I like this highlighter a lot. One that is off camera here is this Touch and Soul Pretty Filter Glodiant Makeup Palette. So inside it has like gradient shades of highlighter and honestly three out of these five work well for my skin tone and it is so blinding. Like I'll just take this one. Look at that. It's so blinding. It's very, very nice. It's a good quality, very blinding, very blendable, very soft. I was actually surprised. I got this in a boxy charm. I was surprised to see what good quality this was, and I was pleasantly surprised. I like this one. Okay, this is the last set of the powder highlighters. So we'll go over the reflective ones first so they don't stay in frame. So this is the Laura Mercier. This is the Celestial Light. This is meant to be like a face powder, but it's way too glowy for that. So I use it as a very natural finish highlighter. Look how glowy this is. So it actually works extremely well as a highlighter it's just so much product um but look at that isn't that amazing i think this was meant to be like a glowy face powder but i can't use it as that so i use it as a highlighter and it is a very natural finish super soft and creamy i love this as a highlighter i will just keep with the theme of grabbing some of my favorites from this group Next is Bobbi Brown. This is actually probably my favorite from this group. This is the highlighting powder in Pink Glow. I wanna get my hands on their peach one that they just launched, but this is so beautiful. Uh, I believe it's a baked formula. I could be incorrect there, but this is so nice. It is just a gorgeous shade on me. It lasts forever, it's blinding. I love this product, my favorite out of this whole group. It's one of my favorite of my highlighters in my entire collection. Next, I really like the famous Benefit Cookie. I didn't try this until very recently. I've only worn it about five times, but I love this as well. It's such a beautiful, like, pink blinding highlighter. What else can you say about it? It's just, it's amazing. I love this. And the next set of my favorites from this group is the M Cosmetics. This is the Sunscape Highlighter in the shade Clarity. This is powder, and it is kind of a powdery um, formula, and it's so it's like like hard <laughs> but it is so beautiful on i have worn this before where people are like what highlighter are you wearing um which doesn't actually happen often but somebody did ask me this it is kind of like a, a golden 
the golden tone, but when it's on the cheeks, it has such a natural finish. And the lasting power on this is actually surpasses a lot of my other highlighters. I, I love this and I think she did a really good job on her highlighter collection. Next, I have a highlighter from Odin's Eye. This is from their Norns collection. This is the Mesmerizer in Web of Destiny. I dislike this product because it's very chunky. Like, I don't know why it's so chunky, um, but when you pick it up, it's almost like it's very, very chunky. I don't dislike the shade necessarily, but it has that pink, green, blue shift which I, you know, it's not something I would like put on and go to work. I would wear this as fun for some reason, but I, I don't usually grab highlighters for fun or where I can wear them where this like chunky pinky glitter would be acceptable. So I don't want to declutter it because I like Odin's Eye things. I started to declutter it at one point. I would not purchase Odin's Eye highlighters again because I think that they all tend to be very shifty and that's just not my style. Okay, the next I have is from House Labs. This one is probably discounted on Amazon right now because this is before she rebranded and went into Sephora. This is the 2D Gel Powder Highlighter in Luce de Sol. Um, I like this a lot. It's a little bit too dark for me, but I love the formula. I actually think this is really pretty even in the shade that it's in. And I think I, it'll still work for my skin tone. So I think this is really good. I think this is probably half off on Amazon right now because this is not part of her permanent line, which I know that she redid them and I have not tried her new highlighters, but I definitely want to. But I'm surprised this formula didn't make it into the new collection. Next, I have a highlighter from Ofra. This was the Nikki, collab, Nikki Tutorials collab in Glazed Donut. I like this this um, shade here. I think the shift to it, the gold kind of icy shift is very nice. I think this is a good one. I have one from Melt. This is the Digital Dust Highlighter in Stargazer. This one looks a little too dark for me, very gold, even more champagne, but it is very nice. I do really like this one. Um, at, at a time, this was one of my favorites, I think, until I got the um, uh, Bobbi Brown one. I really did like this. So I think they do their digital dust powders very nicely. Next from Stila, I have one that is almost a putty. This is the Heaven's Hue Highlighter in the shade Kitten. It feels like a putty. And I'm pretty sure that it is. It is a very nice, pinky, soft, very creamy and blendable highlighter. I wanted to try something again from Stila because I hadn't used anything from them in a while. And so I got this at Nordstrom. And then the very next week, I noticed on Ulta's website that it was half off. So if you want to try something from Stila, I would say get it if it's still discounted at, um, at Ulta right now. It is such a natural, pretty highlighter. I like this one. Next, I have Milani's Baked Highlighter in Dolce Perla. Uh, this is okay. It doesn't have anything that stands out to me, which is interesting because I love most of Milani's face products. This one is a good shade for me. Um, I did swatch it right here. It is a very natural finish. I don't know why it doesn't stand out, but it is a nice highlighter. And then finally from the powder group, I have the Nabla Skin Glazing Highlighter in Ozone. I like this one. I got this probably the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty Sale. I think this is also a baked formula. It's super bright, super blinding. So this is a nice one. That is the end of the powder highlighters. I'll bring out the cream and liquid now. This is my really small collection of cream and liquid highlighters. Let me put them all out for you. Okay, so everything is out. Um, I'm not a huge liquid or cream highlighter fan. I prefer powder highlighters, so I don't have a really big collection and I don't use these very often. My favorite from this set is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in the shade, I think this is 02. Yeah, too fair. It's just very natural. I know that people wear this like under their makeup. Um, I don't typically, but I wear it as like a highlighter on top of makeup and I love it for that reason. It's just a natural finish and I like that. 
The next one from here that I probably like the best is again from Charlotte. This is her Beauty Light Wand in Pillow Talk, I believe is the shade. Yeah. Um, again, it's just a really nice finish. This is pinkier than her Hollywood Flawless Filter. Um, the Pillow Talk shade is pinkier, but I do like that. So if I'm going for like a pinky toned highlighter, I'll grab for this one. Um, I have the Winky Lux Strobing Balm in Radiant Pink. It's just this very creamy, very emollient highlighter. It does dry down, so it's very nice, but it is very beaming for the kind of product that it is. It's, it's a really nice one. I like a lot of stuff from Winky Lux. Next, in terms of like balms, is the Flower Beauty Highlighter Glaze in the shade Day Glow. Um, this is not as emollient, it's a harder formula. So it's, it's a very, very natural finish. And it's kind of sticky. Um, it's way stickier than the Winky Lux highlighter. It doesn't dry down quite as much, but it is a very, very natural highlighter. I keep it because there are some days where I just wanna, you know, brighten up my cheekbone without not like glowing to the sky. Next, I have one from Believe Beauty. This is the All Over Glow Illuminator, and this is in the shade, I have no idea what shade this is in because it doesn't say on the package, but it is a very, very nice highlighter. A lot of product comes out, so it does get a little bit messy, but I'll kind of show you how blinding it is. It's just that it's kind of hard to work with because so much does come out and you only need just a little bit of product. But look at that, holy cow. But it glows and it's just such a nice creamy finish. I really like this. It's just a huge amount of product. I probably would never finish all of this. But again, I think this is a dollar from the Dollar General, so good option. Next, I have one from Marc Jacobs. I'm sure I had got this in like a trio of these little ones and there was one that was darker than this that I gave to my sister and then one that was like a coconut primer. So this is the Dew Drops Coconut Gel Highlighter in the shade 50, Do You. Uh, I, I like this, I think this dries down better than the Believe Beauty. It's a little more gold than I typically go for on an everyday basis, but sometimes I do like you know, a gold highlighter. Again, just a lot of product comes out. I don't know if you can get your hands on these anymore, but I kept this because I actually thought that this is really nice. I liked the primer that came in this set as well. Next, I have the Wet n Wild Highlighting Stick, the Mega Glow Highlighting Stick, and this is in the shade When the Nude Strikes. It's kind of a pinky, pinky shade. The reason that this, I don't like this as much is because I don't like the application. I don't love to like swipe this on my face. I don't know why, probably because I already have blush on and I kind of feel like it will pick up the blush if I do. So, and I don't tend to dig in for a brush or a sponge to apply my highlighter very often. I think it is a very natural finish. And then I have the Tarte Shape Tape Glow Wand. I have hardly seen anyone have this particular product, but I actually think it's very nice. So it can go under makeup or as a highlighter. I think it's intended to be used for both. It's a very natural finish highlighter um, if you use it for that reason. Um, so I do like it. It comes with this like little tiny sponge on the other side, but I don't use I don't use that. I will just kind of like dab it onto my face and blend it in and it's a very natural finish. I don't know if Tarte makes this particular product anymore. I did get it in BoxyCharm. And then finally, this thing that rolled off here is the um, Half Caked, it's by Half Caked, it's the No Chill Luster in the shade Pop Star. I just got this in a BoxyCharm. It's very pinky. Um, I have used it, I think, once. I just don't recall how I feel about it. Again, it's that stick formula. I don't really love this. Again, I, I don't like sticks, and the shade is just a little too pink for me. Okay, that is it for face powders, bronzers, and highlighters. Thank you for joining today's video, and I hope you stick around for the rest of my makeup collection series. Bye.